is going on Hive Warriors? It's your boy Edward V and today we're going to talk about something that I'm constantly talking to you guys about and it's the importance of protein and this study shows that protein actually burns fat faster than all of the other macronutrients even when you account for isocaloric measures which means that all of the calories are the same. Now I'm gonna go ahead and break that down in this video. Stay tuned. All right, quickly guys, don't wanna bog you down, but if you do wanna buy a jump rope with an ergonomic design, aluminum handle, and swivel design, you can't go wrong with the Fledge Fitness Jump Rope because you get all of that plus the carrying case all for the price of $16.50, as well as supporting this channel at the same time. You can click on the top right-hand corner of this video or down in the description box below. And of course, as always guys, thank you so much for your support. Now let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Now, you've always heard me say time and time again, to increase your protein, to up your protein, and on average, the majority of what is on our plate when we sit down to eat is actually carbohydrates. If you're not focusing on anything, you're just eating the normal diet system, normally you have more carbohydrates than you do proteins and fats. But while everyone kind of gets into this battle of no, have more, you know, carbohydrates no have more uh, fats or do or have less carbohydrates or have less fats what tends to be put on the wayside is protein and protein has been shown time and time again in multiple studies to have a higher thermic effect because it has to break down that protein when you're eating it up to 30 percent of the protein's caloric value has to be applied to just breaking it down as opposed to something like carbohydrates which is about 10 to 15 percent or fats which is even less five percent so it means if you have a hundred calories of protein and you eat a hundred calories of protein your net balance of calories in terms of how much you have in your body would be 70 calories because it takes 30 of those calories to break down the protein so i hope that kind of makes it so you understand what i'm talking about in terms of 30 percent uh, thermic effect for the calorie intake and how much calorie is needed to break down protein so i'm always telling you guys up your protein make sure you have more protein on your plate and that's not only the reasons why there are many reasons why uh, protein is very beneficial uh, and the more protein you have on your plate versus all the other macronutrients the more the better off you're more likely going to be now this study that i'm going to talk about the the method used is probably my favorite in terms of rigor in terms of how rigorous it is and how detailed it is but keep in mind I always tell you guys, when it comes to studies, the more detail you get, the more detail that methodology becomes, the less variety in terms of having multiple, a lot of people, or even longevity in terms of how long you can do it. Because it's super detailed, you usually can't do it too long, uh, or you know, it's just very cost effective, it's hard to get that passed, and it's hard to get people to do to sign up for these studies because it's so detailed so this was a randomized control crossover literally my favorite detail uh, study setup because what it is is it gives you actually four data points it gives you the data points of group one versus group two then group two now being in the position of what group one is doing versus group one now being in the position of what group two was doing so basically the intervention group which is the group that's going to have a high protein diet and the control group which is the one that's going to have which is the group that's going to have a low protein diet they have a washout period so there's some time to make sure that all of the different metabolic changes that come from that diet is completely taken away then they flip the groups and now the control group from before is the intervention group and the intervention group from before is the control group and now we can see what the data is between the different people and what the data is and what the data is between the same group of people 
So if Johnny was here in the intervention group, now Johnny is here in the control group. So we get to see exactly what happens to his specific body if he did that, if he did intervention versus control, or if he did control versus intervention. So it's incredibly detailed. Hope I didn't confuse you, but a randomized control crossover design is incredibly detailed and very good uh, data uh, when it comes to these kinds of uh, studies. So this study did appear in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It was published, however, in November of 2020, uh, but now it is, but, but this month it, but this month it actually appeared on the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in February of 2021. And it was run by Camila L.P. Oliveira and colleagues. And I'll tell you what the breakdown was. The intervention group, which is the high protein group, was 35% carbs, 40% protein, and 25% fats. The control group was 55% carbs, 15% protein, and 30% fats. I did forget to mention that this was all done within 32 hours, so we got 32 hours of that data, and it was inpatient, which means they were at the location, and it was done in a whole body calorimetry unit, which is basically a calorimetry chamber, and it looks at the uh, energy expenditure, uh, and it's probably one of the more accurate ways to detect uh, the energy expenditure of the individual. So it actually can detect the energy uh, that is being burned. And what it saw was that the higher protein group burned more calories, had a higher energy expenditure than the control group, even when they crossed them over and did the washout, cross it over and saw the results. All around across the board, the higher protein group had higher uh, energy expenditure. So they were burning more calories per day and it fell in around about 80 calories or so per day. This is a compounded element, however. Please keep in mind, some days might be different, some days might be, some days you might be burning a little bit more, some days you might be burning a little bit less, but you are compounding this. And if you eat 100 calories of protein, it is not the same as eating 100 calories of carbohydrates or 100 calories of fats. That's not to say that calories in versus calories out doesn't matter because it 100% does. The calories in is the 100 calories. The calories out are those 30% that you get for protein breakdown and the 15% that you get for carbohydrate breakdown. So calories still matter, but it is good to understand the nuance of what happens when you are consuming food and how some uh, macronutrients break down differently than others and can give you a advantage. On top of all of this, protein Protein aids with muscle building. Protein actually creates amino acids, and those are the building blocks uh, for your muscle and, and for your muscle fibers and to help you build muscle. So it increases your lean tissue. It helps increase your lean tissue, which also helps increase your metabolic rate because your primary because the primary driver of your metabolic rate is lean mass. The more of it you have, the more increase in your resting metabolic rate because you have to maintain those muscle fibers, the calorie partitioning has to be there. And they had a net negative fat balance, which means that fat was lost in the higher protein group, while the, while the control group did not have a negative fat balance. So, all this shows is that that thermic effect that comes from protein and the fact that protein comes with amino acids and that is a metabolic process that is more demanding in terms of your energy output than all of the other macronutrients shows based on this study and in the short time frame, you have to understand the limitations are it's only 32 hours. There aren't that many people in the study. I believe about 20 or so uh, males, 19 females. So you have to take all of that you know, information and understand that, but also understand that it is incredibly detailed. It was inpatient, they were in a calorimetry chamber, and they checked for all of these different uh, biological markers. But also, the study is in line with what we understand about protein. So there you have it, guys. You can have the same amount of calories, but if you up your protein, if you make sure that the protein is the more it is has the higher percentage on your plate you will probably be better off for multiple uh, facets of your fitness journey and for losing weight and even health helping retain muscle 
helping provide more lean mass, helping to increase your metabolic rate, having a higher thermic effect. All of these things are compounding to help you lose weight quickly. Even in the, even in the postprandial state in terms of how, you, how much you're burning right after you're eating, the energy expenditure right after you're eating, it's higher in the protein group. So there, it's just constantly adding more layers to help you burn more fat while doing the best thing on the opposite end, retaining or building muscle. I'll go ahead and put the link to the study down in the description box below. I hope this has helped you guys and open your eyes to try to have more protein than anything else on your plate. And of course, I want to thank my patrons for my Patreon. I'm going to go ahead and put their names right up here.